Pro tip number one, how to use your self-centering coin punch. So today on Pro Tips with jasonsworks.etsy.com, we'll be going through how to use your self-centering coin punch. These are available at jasonsworks.etsy.com. And if they're not, if you don't see them on the website, then they are being made and will be restocked as soon as possible. But uh, we should get them uh, back up here in no time. So here are the tools that we will be using today. First and foremost, safety glasses. I'll put these on right now. And also a leather apron, uh, paper towels, burr life, that's the dry lubricant for the punch, punch itself, a coin to punch a hole in, urethane pad and a steel block underneath that, brass hammer, dead blow hammer, some tongs to hold the coin to a kneel. This is water and, uh, water and liver of sulfur mixture and for a heat source using oxygen and propane. So we'll go through the uh, coin punch here. <clears throat> I originally got the first one about a year ago from Coin Ring Tools. I'll put his video uh, down below. Uh, super nice guy, really nice guy. Uh, he, I think he had five of them made and uh, I was lucky enough to get one of them. I did see some opportunity for uh, improvements. It was a great design, very efficient, much more efficient than my original technique. Uh, but one improvement that I went ahead and made was a five degree striking face on the punch itself. And also, uh, Bob, the machinist that's making them now, he had a great idea of putting a electroplating zinc plating on it to keep, to keep it from rusting. And also a coarse thread, so it's easier to, to thread and also much quicker to tighten down. So, uh, from there, I think we'll go ahead and we'll anneal a coin using a uh, U.S. half dollar walking liberty, silver walking liberty. I started using the propane and oxygen. It's a little bit hotter flame, so it anneals a little bit quicker. You want to grab the coin on the side so you're not hurting the detail of the coin. And it's best to do this in a darkened room or darkened shop. But you're looking for a dull red color. Also an orange flame. You can see right there the orange flame is coming off. So that's telling me that it's ready to quench. There we go. So for the punch itself, first thing you want to do, oh, I'll go through the all the different dies here as well and punches, different options that we have. So let's see. So that's set up for these coins. This is a 3 8 uh, punch and die. 7 sixteenths and then half inch. Um, now if you wanted, if you wanted say a smaller a smaller hole in your Morgan dollar for a bigger band uh, for your ring, you can go ahead and do that. Just uh, take those guys out and there you go. So that's set up for a 3 8 hole in a Morgan dollar. That'll give you a really really wide band. Um, you just have to make sure to match up your punch and your die and then use the corresponding spacer for your coin. So you have three different sized holes for three different coins. So you have lots of options on what you can do. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just do the <clears throat> standard half dollar right here. That's 7 16 hole. So when you put the die into your housing, you want to make sure that the flat part is facing up and the more rounded part with the size of the of the uh, die is facing down. You just set it in like so and then place your spacer in like so. And what I found works best is to take a corner of the paper towel and just set that inside so that when you place your coin it not only protects the detail of the coin, but also tightens it up a little bit. 
in case the coin is worn down uh, it'll make it nice and tight and I like to put the side of the coin that is going to be showing on the band facing up uh, just because it's a little bit more protected by this here another really good tip here is to use a UHMW tape um, to help protect the detail of the coin because this is what's pressing down on the coin holding it in place you could also use duct tape probably or electrical tape so as you tighten down you want to make sure that the paper is not up against the thread of the housing because if it does grab then it will pull that coin off center and you can watch the coin as you tighten down through the hole to make sure that it doesn't move and so now we'll put some burlife or their dry lubricant on the punch and punch out our hole. Now, you can see there a plug popped out. Now that's only because I've punched several coins out and they've stacked up on the inside. And uh, I just know that I've gone far enough now that that's popped out. And I always want to save those because that's silver. So now we'll unscrew the punch and because this is uh, protected here it's not going to hurt the detail of the coin with that tape you want to hold the punch with one finger while you tap the punch through with your dead blow hammer rubber dead blow hammer and that's all it takes and now you have a uh, perfectly centered hole in your coin so now let's see we'll go through the sharpening process I'm going to go ahead and sharpen the one for the quarter. So if you do need to sharpen your die, which you shouldn't have to very often, maybe you might drop it on the concrete or um, some, something happens to where you, you notice that there's a rounded edge on the, on the corner of the die, this is how you'd want to sharpen it. Go ahead and get your black marker and you know, blacken the face. And then you can either do... You can know, either sharpen it on a whetstone. I like to use water on my whetstones, not oil. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you like to use oil, you can. Go on the coarse side first um, until the black is gone. Then you can blacken it again and then go on the fine side. And what you're looking for is to get that rounded edge off so that it, it um, that uh, the strike face is uh, a single cut all the way to the edge of the, of the die. Now if you want to do it a little bit quicker, you can use a belt sander. You just have to be very careful because you can take a lot of metal off real quick with this guy. And what you want to do before you start it is, is place it up here and kind of get the feel on where that angle is so it's nice and flush on the belt. And then very lightly, I'm using a dull 100 grit belt. You can also use a sharp 220. You don't want to take too much off. You don't want uh, like an 80 grit or 60 grit that's way too coarse you want something pretty fine so feel where it needs to be and then go ahead and start it up and very lightly and quickly uh, grind grind off that black mark and that's it so now the punch is 100% uh, back to the original sharpness. That's all it takes. So let's see what else. Um, uh, yeah, just let me know how you guys like the video. If that helped you out with the coin punch on how to safely use it. Um, also, I think on for the next pro tip that I'm going to do. I'll probably work on uh, making a, a Morgan dollar in real time. I've had a few people ask me about that, so I think that might be the, the next uh, pro tip. And let me know what other pro tips you, you might find interesting. Um, I have, have all the tips in here, tips and tricks on making the coin rings in the uh, How to Make Your Coin Ring manual. That's available again at jasonswork.se.com. Let me know how you like the video. Thumbs up if you like it. And let me know what you'd like to see next. And until then, I'll see you. Bye.